What's good, folks? It's your man, Donald King. Jingling. How are you doing tonight, man? You good? You good? Let me get center frame here. Um, Man, you know, I went to go and... Um, sorry about getting so started late. Sorry about getting started so late tonight. I went to go and support my homeboy's grand opening of his uh, bar tonight. Legacy Bar in Dayton. Donald Jones. Donald Jones, if you guys get a chance to uh, swing by that place, it's pretty fly, man. He put a lot of work into um, building it up. And to see where it is now, um, as compared to where it was even a few months ago, um, it's pretty it's pretty impressive. I, uh, I applaud him, and he's he's been really kind to me. And generous in that he has given me business with my Dayton Dessert Dealer, um, my Dayton Dessert Dealer Enterprise. And, and then um, I'll tell you what's really interesting. And I mentioned this in an earlier podcast a few months back when I when I went to first meet this man. Passing him some wares, passing him some of my uh, my my, um, you know, my pastries and whatnot. Before I even got out of there, <laughs> he was like, hey, pause. I want to sit down and talk to you. And I'm like, bruh, I got a, I got a lot of stuff to do right now. I'm pretty pressed on time. And he was like, yeah, but sit down and talk with me. And I sat down and I talked with him. And um, I tell you, man, it was one of the coolest experiences because he's really sharp. He's really sharp. I mean, like, you know, he's, he's, he's a very strong man. He's a, he's a big man. He's a big man, not just in terms of size and stature, but in terms of his, uh, in terms of his presence. You know what I'm saying? He's genuinely, an, he's an authentically big person, and I'm comfortable around big people. So, when I talked to him, we uh, we exchanged ideas, and he asked deeper questions, which is very rare. Most people assume to know. And even with all this man has accomplished and all that he understands in life, he still takes time to ask deeper questions, which automatically got my respect from him. But, you know, we had a very, we had a, we had a, we had a really good conversation. And this is still why he was building, he was in the midst of building his business. So tonight at his grand opening, I was more than happy, more than happy to go out and support it's my brother, man. I love strong people. I love big people. People who are settled in who they are and who've made enough mistakes in life to not be scared of making mistakes, but who've also learned enough in life to not repeat making the same mistakes they made before. Big people. I love them to death. But yeah, man, I went and uh, kicked it with this man over in Legacy Bar and uh, I'm very proud of what he's been able to put together for himself. You know, good deal, good deal. You know, the subject of tonight's podcast is does reality care about what you think is fair? Does your inner sense of justice have anything to do with reality? A lot of times we get it in our minds that our sense of justice is reality. We get it in our minds that what we think is fair in terms of the distribution of punishments and rewards applies to everyone and should apply to everything. In reality, that's that's simply not the case. A lot of times you put in tons of work and you don't get the payoff. A lot of times people get the payoff without doing any of the work. And it's not quite fair, especially in society, especially in in corrupt organic structures. And especially with respect to the, the cellular building blocks operating within and sort of 
being beheld to the corrupt organic structures, the distribution of punishments and rewards, the distribution of resources, the distribution of, of, of opportunities for inclusion and ways to advance, they're simply unfair. Within corruption, there's very little fairness. Those who have power tend to keep power and take more power for themselves and or tend to live and benefit at the expense of others and those who are without, they tend to get exploited. This is the way that it works at a mechanical level. What is justice? Justice is fairness or at least the perception of fairness with respect to the distribution of punishments and rewards or means of and or for consumption. Justice is what a person calls it when they perceive and or experience what they perceive to be moral symmetry. I got what I deserved. They got what they deserved. I didn't get what I deserved. They didn't get what they deserved. Translation, there wasn't a fair distribution of punishments and rewards and or resources within the considered situation or circumstance. That's what it boils down to on a mechanical level. It's what it boils down to on a mechanical level. Does reality honor, recognize, or deal in the concept of justice? Absolutely not. Reality doesn't care what you think is fair. Reality does not care what you think is fair. Reality does not deal in justice. It deals in balance. Balance. If I were to give a principal definition to it, it would be the natural resting state of tensions between opposing forces within a given context and or realm of consideration. It's the natural resting state between tensions which some to create an equilibrium state. Balance has to do with systems and how phenomena and effects are processed through and or produced by systems. When your body is completely balanced, guess what? It means that you're consuming the right amount of calories. You're passing the right amount of waste material. But from your systems, all of these functions and features of your organic structure are working harmoniously. That is when you're in a state of balance. It has nothing to do with justice. Nothing to do with justice. If the kidney isn't working hard enough, for whatever reason, let's say by way of defect, and it causes the liver to do more work until the kidney is repaired or restored, assuming it ever is, does the liver ever say, that's not fair. It's not fair, I have to do more work. Why isn't the kidney doing more? See, if the liver did that, then the liver would be thinking in terms of justice. It would be operating by way of justice. In balance, there is only symbiosis. Only symbiosis. When there's a little bit of bend here, there's a reciprocal bend here so that the system adjusts and adapts. There are no ideations 
of what is fair in terms of the distribution of workloads or the distribution of punishments and rewards. Justice is an ideal. It's skewed by and according to the individual experience. Every person's inner sense of justice is fundamentally divorced from reality and unique unto itself. What one person thinks is fair, another person will think isn't. And on and on down the line. Reality doesn't give a fuck about what people, what humans think is fair. Ooh, Sister Candace comes in. Justice and balance are two different things. Whoa, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Justice and balance are mutually exclusive things. Justice exists exclusively in idealism. Balance is a function of reality. Every life form that's sustainable, which isn't parasitic, it deals in balance. Its systems are balanced. Its systems are balanced. Justice and balance are mutually exclusive things. Justice has to do with the concept, the ideation of authority. Who and or what determines what is fair? Balance is emergent. It is a natural, it is a natural state and condition. Yeah, brother Mike Jones, you're getting busy, brother. <laughs> Always, my brother. I love you, Mike Jones. You're my brother. I love you, man. Thank you for tuning in. I love you too, Candace. You're my people. Yo, let me see. So, getting back to these concepts. These are very, very simple concepts, people. Justice and balance are mutually exclusive things. Where there is a perception of justice, there is no balance. And where there is balance, there can be no perception of justice. Throughout the course of my life, I've given, in pretty much any situation I can think of, more than I think that I should have. Even as avatar for this cycle, I've given out exponentially more than I've gotten in exchange for my efforts. Do I get to sit back and say, I've done enough. I'm not doing any more. This is not fair. Does reality give a fuck about what I think is fair? Yes, it's a lot of work that comes with this role. It's a lot of thankless work. It's a lot of invisible work. And a lot of days I'm left feeling empty and depleted. Does reality care about what I think is fair? No. Which goes back to the point that I had in my podcast with Candace on Monday. It boils down to discipline. It boils down to personal honesty. And it boils down to, 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 to flow state and, and surrender. All of these things, they work in tandem. You are not who determines what is balance. Reality does. As long as you put in the work to be balanced and to achieve balance and to reach balance, then you're always moving in the direction of reality. When you halt in your tracks because your inner sense of justice gets in the way of you pursuing what is consistent with reality, then guess what? You become divorced from reality. You lose sight of reality. And, this, and as such, you delve and fall deeper and deeper into the inner story. Sister Candace comes back in. Imagine running off with this inner sense of justice and propelling you, this inner sense of justice propelling you and attempting to restore balance to situations. Judge, jury, and executioner. Kind of sounds like cops. Oh, well, that's... That's very, that, it's poignant what you just said. Yes, that is true. And see, the thing is, whenever you're dealing with an authoritarian mind, as 
per the example of cops, they never think in terms of balance. They only think in terms of justice. They think in terms of what is fair. And fairness is always skewed by and according to the inner story. It's skewed by and according to the individual's own values and their perceptions of self-worth. Hey, I had to kill him. He looked like he was reaching for something. They justify this in their mind. In reality, anybody who murders anything you incur wrath from reality because you've disrupted balance. Reality doesn't give a, f a fuck about what humans think justice is. It goes to the point that Jesus made when he said, Vengeance is mine. And he wasn't speaking as Jesus the man. He was speaking as the entity performing through the one called Jesus in, in this sense right here. Reality as speaking through this entity, this avatar individual. It said, don't worry yourself with getting justice because in the end, balance far outweighs justice. Balance is perfect. Justice is flawed. Balance is absolute. Justice is subjective. If you worry about disrupting reality by trying to make reality and agents performing within reality match your inner sense of justice, the only thing you succeed in doing is creating further imbalance. That's all you do. You have to get past your inner sense of justice. Sister Candace comes back in. Also seems as though a strong inner sense of justice stems from idealism too, as we talked about before, slippery slope. Absolutely. That's what it is. It is a slippery slope. And it is always it is always based in idealism and skewed by and according to the individual experience. What one person thinks is fair will never match what another person thinks is fair. Unless you're talking about in broad strokes. Like when you say one person is like, oh, O.J. Simpson should have gone to prison. Ah. And another person, you couldn't prove anything, so O.J. should go free. Now in these broad strokes, you can sit here and you can say, hey, he's guilty. He deserves to be punished. And, and you know, or conversely, you can say, oh, no, they didn't prove a case. He deserves to be free as so many people who are of different races have gone free for, for more egregious crimes through the years. But then when you start getting into the particulars, that's when everything skews. Yeah, I think that he should get the death penalty. Well, I don't believe in the death penalty, so maybe he should get life in prison. Ooh, I think he should be a slave forever. This is the way it works at a mechanical level. Justice, everybody's inner sense of justice never matches. You ever been in a situation where you've watched, you watched, I'm sure many of you have been in relationships before where you, you argued with your mate. You argued with your mate over what you thought was fair and how their actions didn't live up to or match your inner sense of justice. And you argue back and forth, trying to prove to each other whose position is right on the matter. No resolution. Everybody's angry and tense. Inner senses of justice are not recognized. They are not taken care of or adhered to. And both people go on feeling misunderstood and cheated out of their justice. And that lack of resolution gets thrown onto this huge pile of unresolved matters that ultimately weigh on the system of interactions between the individuals which sum to create the relationship 
and the shit breaks. Neither party is thinking about balance. Both parties are thinking about what they think is fair. You're not doing enough to satisfy me. No, you're not doing enough to satisfy me. Nobody's eyes on the ball because both people's eyes are focused on the mirror. Reality itself doesn't give a shit about what you think is fair. I have a son. I have a son named Kyle. He is the most beautiful and amazing soul I've ever seen in my entire life. I love this child with everything in me and more. He was born at 24 weeks. He was born at 24 weeks. He was born with a condition called amniotic band syndrome. That means that when he was in utero, fibrous strands from the amniotic sac he was developing within got wrapped around some of his appendages as he was continuing to grow and it took certain parts of his body it took the bottom of his right leg it took his heel it bruised his heel so from his calf down on his right leg, he was born without it. He was born without four toes on his left foot and missing a portion of his ring finger on the right, on his right hand. And I'm an avatar. I've been doing this work, doing good work trying to uplift this species, trying to help as many people as I can for, oh my God, 13 years now. And after all the good that I've done to help people, my son was born in a grave state. And it, it it hit my soul in a way I couldn't I couldn't even begin to describe. It hurt on levels that you couldn't imagine because here I am doing good. Here I am being good. Not just for myself, but for the species. I'm trying to live bigger than what my mortal self will allow. Not for my benefit, but for the benefit of everyone. And this circumstance befalls the most important thing to me in all the world. If, in, if, I, if ever I wanted to give up on being an avatar, that would have been the point. But reality does not give a shit about what I think is fair. It doesn't care about what I think is fair. Here's this innocent child born into a circumstance it had no control over. Exacerbated by the fact that its father just happens to be a thing. That it didn't ask its father to be and that its father didn't ask to be either. And I still have to figure out how to muster the strength to push forward through all the antipathy with something that I perceive to be unfair weighing on my every move. Does reality give a shit about what I think is fair? No. Does my perception of fairness, does my perception of justice is it is it is it licensed for me to stop doing what I do? Is it licensed for me to fall back and give up? No. Cause is 
unfortunate as the circumstances my son was born into, there are children who are born into far, far worse circumstances. Far worse circumstances. He has two loving parents who will flip the world over for him to make sure that he is good. People who are strong enough to handle the circumstance that he was born into and help see him to autonomy because we're built strong like that. He is, he's good. So does reality give a fuck about what I think is fair? No. And because reality doesn't give a fuck about what I think is fair, can I ever let my inner sense of justice get in the way of me doing everything in my power to make sure I'm constantly pursuing balance and trying to bring balance to the world to the very best of my ability? Should that ever get in the way? No. It's my job to show up and get her done. Period. A lot of us are born into unfair circumstances. Is it ever an excuse to stop trying? No. Is it ever an excuse to throw your hands in the fucking air and say, hey, you know what? I, I, I give up. No. Like I was saying in my podcast with Candace on Monday, you let reality decide where your cutoff point is. You show up and you do the work. If something seems unfair, fuck what you think is fair. Keep pressing until you can't press any further. Let reality itself tell you where you stop. Let reality itself tell you where you can't go. Don't let personal belief or fatigue or pain or boredom and disinterest draw the line for you. You step into it and you get it done. Period. Fuck what you think is fair. Show up and do your best. But yeah. Yeah, that's the way that it works. Because in the end of the day, reality's balance is exponentially more perfect, more accurate, and far more devastating, assuming you're in bad standing with reality, than justice. Somebody does you wrong in society, and you want justice for what they did to, to make you feel pain, or to make you feel dissatisfaction or loss. You want to show up and make somebody suffer for your amusement and satisfaction. When you create imbalances in reality, though, the system itself says, hey, asshole, you created an imbalance, so whatever it takes to rectify the imbalance, regardless of how excruciating it is to you, is coming out of your potential and your life force headed into the next life cycle. You're going to suffer in ways you can't imagine now because you don't have a frame of reference to understand exactly how bad this is going to get for you. But if you create imbalance, and worst of all, you're so corrupt that you don't have it in you to do something to try and rectify it, well, now you have to answer to me. Human justice ends with pain. Human justice ends with loss. It ends with imposing suffering and humiliation onto things so as to satisfy the inner sense of justice. Natural balance doesn't care about pain. It doesn't care about making things humiliated. It takes in order to rebalance systems. Pain is happenstance. Suffering is happenstance to reality taking back from you in order to rebalance itself. Which is why Jesus said, vengeance is mine. You see, what reality imposes onto the person for creating imbalances and being sources of imbalance exponentially outweighs what humans can do in the way of justice. 
They stole from me. They didn't steal from you. They created an imbalance and a ripple effect in society, in, in reality, and even within society extending up to reality, which caused the the system of society to aggress even harder against the body of the planet, which caused reality as an entity to experience more pain as a result of this corrupt entity acting against one of its cellular building blocks. Every action, every imbalance you create in reality is met with a perfect response and not just one that is arbitrarily negotiated by and according to any person's inner sense of justice. When you create imbalances in reality and ripple effects that stem from the imbalances that you create in reality, you don't just have to pay for what you did at the local level. You have to pay for all of the reverberative effects created from what the fuck you did. Which is why I stress to everyone, especially individuals at the top of society, placing blocks and, and, and barricades on my ability to reach the masses to stand down. You're fucking yourself up exponentially by the millisecond. It's, it's easy to not be afraid of things that you don't understand and that you have no frame of reference for, but I'm trying to explain and give you a frame of reference to help you understand why doing such things ultimately works to your your detriment. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, Sister Candace comes in. She says, commitment. Commitment. Uh, that is a single word. I don't know what it's in reference to. Possibly in reference to me sticking with all the shit that I have to... Uh, sticking with my, my task and goal even through all of my personal loss i don't know if that's what you meant by that but yeah i'm driven by commitment i'm driven by my inner sense of uh my inner sense of accountability i'm fortunate in that i'm able to see reality as a mechanical phenomenon so when you have the avatar perspective and you see how everything fits and flows together, it's very, it's very easy to fall back and be like, like if you <laughs> imagine walking, imagine walking through a minefield, and everyone else is just dancing with their blindfolds on and 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 headphones on, blasting their favorite songs, and they're like, they're just dancing through this minefield. Imagine that you can actually see the mines and you're like yo hey y'all stop wilding take off those goddamn blindfolds stop dancing take those things out of your ears you are in dangerous territory stop and everybody's like no i don't want to listen to you over my favorite song mm -hmm. whenever i'm alone with you that was bad but still but yeah that's basically how it goes so imagine you can see the dangers because you have this pit, this this eyesight, this sort of uh, absolute pitch when it comes to seeing reality and how it works as a phenomenon, how it works as a system. When you understand, when you see the impacts and the ripple effects and how all this stuff works in a mechanical level, you understand why it's very important to to be prudent, to be to be very. Um, cautious about how you move through this field because when you're here creating these imbalances when you're here sort of living your best life at the expense of the system itself that's very easy to do if you if you don't understand that all of the shit comes with an absolute cost like imagine going into a mcdonald's and you see all this, like imagine you hadn't eaten in a while, you go into a McDonald's, you see all this food in the board, and you're like, I want a number one, and I want a number two, and I want a number three, and give me some fries, and a McFlurry, ooh, y'all McFlurry machine work, I'll take two of those, 
and you just keep piling on all this stuff to your order. And then they say, okay, that's going to be $300.27. There's going to be three hundred dollars twenty. That's going to be three hundred twenty-seven dollars and thirty-four cents. And you're like, what? You mean this stuff costs? Yeah. Yeah, it costs. The fuck do you think this is? Of course it costs. What? what where do you think you are? Oh, I thought that y'all were just giving away food. No, but you ordered it now. It's all working this very second. So, you need to cough up that three hundred. $27.43. No, I didn't know. Reality, reality doesn't give a shit about what you think is fair. No, it's not fair. I shouldn't have to pay because no one told me that I was supposed to pay. No one told you to order everything either. You could have asked questions. You could have tried to investigate and figure out what the fuck was going on before you committed to this course of action. Now that you've committed to this course of action, and you've incurred this debt, it's coming out of you one way or another. Whether or not you think that's fair is immaterial to reality as a system. Reality doesn't fucking care what you think is fair doesn't care what I think is fair I'm, I'm a direct agent working on behalf of the system and it, it doesn't care about what I think is fair cool part about that is even though it doesn't care about what you think is fair, it always gives you a way to find balance. Because reality is a balanced system. It's not malicious. It always Reality always provides agents performing within it the means to find their way back to balance. In order to find your way back to balance, you have to live conscientiously. Conscientiousness is, for all intents and purposes, the balanced mind. It's considering, it's, 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 it's a combination of reasoning and intuition and, and compassion and honesty and all these other attributes of reality. But It's the tool, the conscientious mind is the tool you can use to find your way back to balance. The thing is, you have to choose to use it. You have to choose practicing honesty. You have to choose employing reasoning. You have to choose employing. Um, you have to choose employing uh, and 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 developing your faculty of intuition. But it's always possible to find your way back to balance. Question is whether or not you can do it in time. And if you waste all your time pursuing your inner sense of justice and trying to make reality fit with and conform to your inner narrative, then guess what? You waste all your opportunity to find and pursue balance trying to make the world fit with and conform to your sense of justice. This is the way it works, people. The way it works. Yeah. That's how it goes. The funny thing about it all is when you live for reality, when you live for balance, your desire for justice subsides, but more importantly, you tend to find that balance outperforms justice. My biological mother, as I mentioned in an earlier podcast, Brother Zane! How you doing? M. Zane. <laughs> hey, my brother. How you doing tonight? In an earlier podcast, I mentioned how my biological mother was bipolar and schizophrenic. 
She used to torture my brother and I. She did some pretty horrible things because she was suffering from mental illness and the only thing that she knew how to do was try to transfer her anger and frustration and aggression into someone who was weaker than her in the same way the world did to her. I spent a lot of years being mad at her for all the things that she did to hurt not me per se, but my brother because all I wanted to do was protect him from this monster that was exponentially bigger than us. The worst part about having a great memory is that a lot of the things you wish you could forget, you, you simply can't. The shit stays with you. I get older, and this is after me realizing she was a little girl trapped in a woman's body, but I had a strong inner sense of justice when I was a narcissist, and I wanted to make her suffer for all she had done. I wanted to make her know and own the fact that she was wrong. And I wasted a lot of years that I probably could have gotten a chance to be better to her, clinging to this idea that she was going to suffer for what she did. And it turns out that in the most ironic twist of fate ever, Everything she did to me had to be done to me in order for me to be in the position that I'm at now. In order to be what I am now, I had to endure all of those things so that I could understand what parasitism is from the inside out. So even though she was the agent acting against me, it was the system of reality controlling the show the entire time, making sure that I was prepared to become a fucking avatar. My inner sense of justice got destroyed when I realized that a person who abused me, and tormented me, did it because it was all in preparation for me to become something bigger. To make a major impact on the world. At least by way of how I'll be allowed to within, from within my current circumstance. But I wanted to get even with her. And it wasn't even her who was the reason why I was in the situation to begin with. How's that for irony? I wanted to make her suffer for something that she was just playing a small part in, preparing me for something much greater in life. Yeah, man. Irony. Irony, irony, irony. Is it fair? Is it fair for me to be a foster kid? Probably not. Is it fair for me to get abused through most of my childhood and adolescence? Probably not. Was it fair for me to be psychologically traumatized and go through all the shit that I've gone through? Probably not. In the grander state of the system, though, did it set me up to make a bigger impact in the way of balance? Yeah. So who to be mad at? Who to get justice from? Hmm? You tell me. You tell me. <sighs> get past your inner sense of justice. Justice only exists within the inner story. It is based in narcissism. As Sister Candace pointed it out, pointed out earlier. 
by and according to your inner sense of justice, you believe that you are judge, jury, and executioner. There are so many things that operate from outside your realm of influence and outside your realm of perceptibility and experience weighing upon how these transactions come to pass in your life that for you to form any judgment on them whatsoever only makes you ignorant in the grand scheme of things. Fuck what you think is right and wrong. You hold no authority over reality. You don't. It isn't your job to punish people for your amusement and satisfaction. Or more importantly, come up with reasons for why you deserve and others don't. It isn't your job to say why you should be rewarded and the others should be punished. It isn't your job to sit back and be the critic for the world and to try to make everything and everyone prostrate itself and or themselves before you in your own sense of righteousness. You are not the star of reality. You're not. I'm literally a function of a system. And even as some people might perceive that to be an entitlement or a privilege in some way, shape, or form, even I have no authority over reality but an agent operating within the frame of a system and what I think is fair and unfair has no bearing on the system itself. Practice reasoning, honesty, and humility. Humility only in the sense that you recognize and make peace with the fact that you are not the star of reality. You aren't. I'm not. No one is. Strive to understand balance. Strive to understand what constitutes symbiosis and mutualism within the frame of interactions or systems of interactions that you manage and operate within. In your relationships, don't fight to be right. Maybe, maybe work to understand things a little bit better instead of trying to prove that the other party should conform to your inner sense of justice. Sister Candace comes in. I'm in this moment understanding intuitively what a liability having such a strong inner sense of justice has made me to others and to myself. Girl, don't catch these hearts. Don't catch these hearts. My people. That's what it is. The inner sense of justice, it only gets in the way of you recognizing and syncing up with reality. And don't get it twisted, because I'm not sitting here on some high horse telling you, Oh, I've ascended. Oh, how dare you? How dare you not be where I am when I was only where you're at five seconds ago? Every now and again, I still struggle with my own inner sense of justice, and then, then I have to fall back. Donald King, you're not the fucking star. Fall back, bro. You're not the star. This, this even though you're in it, even though you feel something from it, this isn't about you. You're not the star. I want you to imagine it like this. Imagine you got shot in your arm. You got shot in your arm and there's a bullet lodged in there. Right? Now, imagine this happened in your right arm. And in your left arm, you picked up a knife. And you dug it in because you're trying to cut the bullet out. You're trying to cut this bullet out and the cells that you have to cut through 
the cells that you have to injure in order to get this bullet out. They're like, hey, how dare you? It's so unfair. From their perspective, from their experiential vantage point, you hurting them could seem very unfair. It's unjust. If they understood that you were doing this because you were trying to get this bullet out so that it didn't get infected and so that you could stitch the wound and you could save the body that they would ultimately get recycled back into anyway, then it makes it makes sense in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, you have to cause yourself some additional pain in order to make sure that the collective, the system stays strong and viable. Keep that in mind whenever you go through your trials and tribulations. At the personal level, they seem very unfair. They're unjust. It's not justice. At the systemic level, though, what's happening towards creating balance and harmony? When you think at the system, when you think at the systemic level, it all makes sense. When you think selfishly and/or at the experiential level, and you can't think above it, then everything is just happening to you. Everything is encroaching on your sense of balance, and not your sense of balance, but your sense of justice and your your sense of comfort and convenience. This is the mind of the ideologue. I just want to be comfortable. I just want to be happy and secure, but at the expense of what? What has to suffer so that you can be okay? And all of this suffering that you cause just try to be okay. Who does it get charged back to? Who does it get charged back to? So yeah, man. Uh, you know what? We're going to go ahead and start wrapping this up. I'm surprised I actually shot this. I have to make some cookies now. <laughs> I have to bake. I have to bake. And I'm still somewhat imbibed. But yeah, got to get her done. Got to get her done. Burning the can. I don't burn the candle at both ends. I burn it in the middle. I burn it in the middle. Is it fair? No. Is it what's required of me for the time being? Yeah. Do I show up and do my part regardless of how hard it is or how fair I think it is? You're fucking right I do. Every day I don't miss a beat. No days off, that's all right. It's all right. Once I'm out of this body, all of the imbalances that have come to my life, all of the disruptions, all the delays, and everyone who's taken part of it, every system designed by people who took part in it, everything gets charged back to those who stood in my way. I hate having to be patient to wait for it to happen, wait for it to happen, but I mean, it'll happen. Reality balances itself perfectly as a function of reality, well, there's no way it doesn't come to pass in that way. But, from the experiential vantage point in this moment, does it seem fair? No. Does what I think is fair get in the way of me doing what's required of me? No. Fuck no. I get her done. And I'll keep going until reality itself tells me I'm done or I can proceed no further. I will continue to pursue balance until I can proceed no further. I will continue to try and make as many positive impacts on the world and on people's lives as I can until I can proceed no further.
not by or according to my inner sense of justice, but by the rule of reality, by the parameters set forth by reality. And that's how you get it done, my friends. Let me see. Sister Candace comes back in. You're always making something sweet after the podcast. P.S. Please save cookies for Candace. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring some sweets. I'm, the next time I get you, I think, uh, yo, I'm still trying to, I think we're going to probably swing that back on Monday because we got some real good feedback on that last podcast, man. I, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that a lot. That went, that went well. That went well. Um, you really brought good balance to what I do. And I appreciate you, like, genuinely. Like, that was, that was fire. We're going to run that back, man. Like, shit, that might even become, that. I, my, I mean, like, you you were so dope. That, I mean, like, we, we might have to make that, like, a, a mainstay or a staple. Like I told you before, it's like I still got a couple of people that it's like I, I need to get in the mix because I've been telling them that I'm going to go ahead and get them that way, um, get that way to, to see them and politic and parlay and whatnot. But, I mean... The way that that flowed, that might be a constant thing. Like, I, I mean, assuming that you're cool with it, I mean, like, I'm, I'm definitely down to, we, <laughs> we, we definitely might have to run that back. That was, I think that I actually watched it back a few times, and um, every time I watched it back, I was more and more impressed with your, your section than I was with mine. I think that you handled yourself exceptionally well, good pacing, like you articulate yourself brilliantly. Like, I mean, like that's. Would you say uh, uh, Regis and Mike, or Regis and Michael, uh, possibility? But yeah, that that balance was there, man. I'm, I I like that a lot. We we definitely might have to run that one back. And not even might. We're gonna run that back. Anywho, y'all, y'all already know what it is. I'm your boy Donald King. I make him sing. Love it. No, I, I, I talk shit. I'm funny. Uh, but, uh, yeah, man, we, uh, you already know I'm shooting this on Facebook Live. I'm shooting this on Facebook Live, but you can also catch me on different platforms. I'm on YouTube. Um, you can copy the hyperlink down there. I mean, it was not a hyperlink, but you can copy the link right there. Um, shit, maybe on my OBS I might actually make this a hyperlink before too long. Uh, but you can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram at Avatar Cycle X I I I. This Avatar Cycle thirteen, and then also I post content to Medium quite often. Um, you know, and if if you want to be part of helping me build this up to a larger platform, you can always um, become part of the Patreon family. I'm at Avatar Cycle X I I I. That's Avatar Cycle 13. And then also, if you get any sort of appreciation from what I do, and you just want to bless your boy with a little love, as Candace said, you can salt bay me. You can uh, you hit me up on Cash App. You can just make a quick donation. All proceeds go to building this up to a larger platform. And I appreciate y'all for chiming in, for tuning in. Um, yeah, man, it's like, you know. We're gonna circle back to this this point real quick. Um Oh yeah, so my cash app is Donna Kang. I forgot to say that part again. I think. But uh we'll circle back to this point right before we close out. The main thing that you you need to understand is that um justice justice only exists inside your mind. It isn't real. Balance is real. Focus on reality. Focus on getting in sync with reality and less on trying to make everything fit into and, and sort of uh, uh, sort of make sense through and by way of your inner story. Justice is part of the story you tell yourself about the world around you and your place and value within it. Justice is part of your identity, which means that it is necessarily subject to change by and according to exposure to new information, ideas, and experiences. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. It's your man. I'm out. <laughs>